Hey guys, I am so excited about today's tutorial. When I got this commission, I knew I had to film it for all of you. Sonic the Hedgehog is my all-time favorite video game series, so getting the opportunity to work on the blue blur himself was such a treat. The series as a whole has some of the most memorable characters and storylines, my favorite being Sonic Adventure 2. I remember spending hours in the Chow Gardens raising my Chow Oh, hold on a sec. I'm getting a call on my Nokia 6370 in the year of our Lord 2020. Hello? What? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, um... Yeah, you're speaking in some weird, sped-up, high-pitched tone like in the cartoons, and I just can't... I just can't understand you, so just text me. I'm going to assume you understand me. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, bye. Huh. So, apparently, the reference photo I received wasn't a humanized Sonic, and this character's hair is just that large and ridiculous. Interesting. If you're looking to make Gallo's hair more accurate to the anime, you've come to the wrong tutorial, Buster. Sometimes, and by sometimes I mean almost every time, what looks good, or, you know, even just like, passable in animation, doesn't translate well into the third dimension. When I style, I never aim for accuracy. Instead, I like to focus on making the style look as flattering on the wearer as possible. For that, I look up previous people who have cosplayed the character and borrow elements from what I liked in their styling job. Squeakadeeks did such a wonderful job on their Gallo wig, and I absolutely loved the sort of wispy, swoopy version they did. I checked out more of their work after stumbling upon this Gallo picture, and they're actually a super skilled cosplayer, so definitely check them out. I knew I needed a lot of volume for this, so I opted for an Arda Kyle in denim blue. The first step is to establish where you want the part to be. And then heat set the fibers to fall to the left with a steam gun or flat iron. I didn't have my tripod or camera at the time when I was filming this in my bathroom, so I was literally holding my phone with my teeth. Please appreciate this footage. It took so much effort just to use my two hands. I left a little bit of fiber in the front right for a side spike. He doesn't have one in the reference, but I feel like it was necessary to frame the face better. Before any scissors or hairspray is touched, separate every single spike and plan out the overall shape. I usually add or subtract that number based on what looks best when I'm translating it onto the physical wig. On this one, I counted a total of eight main spikes and then a whole lot of... Just, just nonsense here. Seriously, Gallo, why are you like this? WHY ARE YOU LIKE THIS?! Even though we're not making his hair as ridiculously big as the anime, we still need a good amount of volume. To do this, tease each spike while holding it in the direction you want it to point. When you're satisfied with the tease, Lightly brush out the top layer of fiber so you can disguise the mess. I personally like to repeat this process two to four times per spike. To make the style last longer, I like to heat set the fibers to naturally fall in the direction that I'll be hairspraying them into. This step is optional if you're pressed for time, but it really makes a difference in the longevity of your wig. Why yes. The phone was in my mouth again, as you can tell by the shaky and out of shot footage. Hairspray your spike and blow dry it while holding it into place. Pay attention to the way your spike looks, 360 degrees. I've been studying a lot of other stylists' work so I can improve my own craft, and I noticed Melinda Chan's heavy focus on silhouette. On a wig she styled for my friend, she curved the spikes in a twist so that they would look full in all directions, not just from a direct viewpoint. Totally worked here for Gallo's front spike. She has some great content posted if you guys are interested in wigs. Go check her out! 
Yay, I have my actual equipment now! Although everything here is much of the same. Teasing the roots, brushing off the messy fibers, my arm blocking the camera... Nothing new. It probably would have been better to start from the bottom and work my way up to avoid potentially messing up the spike above it, but... I think I've talked enough, so I will let you enjoy the royalty-free background music while I speed up the styling process. Because Gallo is a literal Sonic OC, he has yellow stripes on his hair that we need to add. I luckily had some extra fibers left over from when I styled Peridot years ago. Legend has it that there are still blonde fibers in my friend's carpet. I lightly hairspray the fibers at the ends to hold them into place, and once the hairspray is dried, I dig in with a hot glue gun. I highly recommend you do this with a high temp glue gun so the glue spreads more easily. Hot glue the end inside the base of the spike and then adhere the rest of the fibers to the length of the spike with glue and hairspray. I only did the main front spikes because I thought it would look nicer, but you can do as many as you'd like, or even none at all. And that concludes our Gallo the Hedgehog tutorial. It gives me the warm fuzzies when I get to see pictures of people actually wearing the wigs I styled for them. I was so excited that I asked my friend who commissioned this for me if I could post their selfies. They gave me the green light, so here they are. If you ever commission a wig for me, please send me the pictures of you wearing them. 
If I happen to tape the styling of your wig, I would love to add them to the video. Thanks for watching. Especially since I haven't finished setting up my new studio and I filmed half of this with my teeth. Bye!